Welcome here. I'm really excited to share our baby sleep tip today about removing swaddles, how to do it effectively and when to do it. Swaddles are a fantastic tool in our toolbox as parents. However, it's not something that we want to keep in place forever. The reason being is that as baby grows, when a baby sleeps, their development actually shifts in their brain during their sleep. Anything they learn during the daytime is going to move into that long-term memory at nighttime. So there's going to be a little bit of practicing at night. And so as parents, it's key that we keep them safe. What happens is at about 12 weeks old, baby's startle reflex is going. So we're getting something called partial paralysis in sleep. This is where your baby is not going to move and act out their dreams as much, but they're also going to be able to wake up if there's an emergency or they're hungry or they've pooped in their diaper. So that swaddle is really for that startle reflex and that startle reflex is going at around 12 weeks. Another thing that's starting at 12 weeks is those motions of learning to roll. So we need to have that swaddle out by 12 weeks so that baby is easily able to learn to roll and we have that wide open for development. You can move it on out earlier, absolutely. However, by 12 weeks, we definitely need to have the swaddle done. Otherwise, it does become a safety hazard. Why? Because if they're swaddled and they roll themselves onto their belly, their arms are not free to get themselves out. If your baby is an older baby, so we're talking kind of like 12 weeks and up, then we want to move that swaddle out really quickly, especially if they're already showing signs of rolling. As soon as they start showing signs of rolling, let's start this transition process out. If they're already rolling and you're having a and you're needing to move the swaddle out, then I would just kind of like remove the swaddle like in one night and help them in other ways. Let's give them some hands on reassurance. Let's rock them if we need to. Let's reaffirm that they need to go to sleep in another way. However, without the swaddle as it is a safety concern. So if we're looking to remove the swaddle, how do we do it? First of all, when you are swaddling, I find babies are most comfortable when their hands are up. When you look at a profile of an ultrasound picture, you'll often see baby's profile like this and you'll often see their hands tucked up. That means they really do like to have their arms up. It's a foreign concept to have their arms strapped down. So I would really encourage you to swaddle with their arms up. Then as you're looking to move out that swaddle, what we want to do is do this progressively. We're not going to do it cold turkey if your baby is before three months. We're going to take one arm out, allowing them to have one arm free for three nights. You can alternate which arm it is. Then we're going to have two arms out for three nights, swaddling underneath the arms. Then we're going to move the swaddle down before moving completely to a sleep sack. In our video tomorrow, we're going to discuss why sleep sacks are great and some options and how to use them. As for which sleep sacks to buy, the things that I would really look for in buying a sleep sack is that you're able to transition out of it. Then I would look, look and make sure that it's going to be safe and that baby's not going to come out of it as well themselves. You can use a cloth to swaddle your baby. However, I would recommend getting an actual swaddle from a store that has Velcro or is a zip up one so that is nice and safe and using your fabric swaddles during the day so that then baby is not going to move around and get caught in the fabric if it should come loose. The first thing is keeping our babies safe, right? So I would look for something that has the Velcro or the zipper. Then the other thing I would look for in a swaddle is making sure that we have space from the neck to the uh, chin here so that it's not coming up too high. A well-fitting swaddle should have almost like a t-shirt line rather than being up too close to the chin. Then I would also, just convenience sake, I really like having the zipper from the bottom or the Velcro from the bottom. It means you can easily check that diaper without completely undoing the swaddle. Remember, so the keys from this video are, first of all, it's a helpful tool, it's not a must. Second thing is make sure that baby is safe. If they're already rolling, then it needs to come out straight away. Third thing is, is it needs to go by 12 weeks. Then the last thing is that we wanna make sure that we do it strategically and consistently. Make sure that we're not taking the swaddle off, using it again, 
let's use it as bedtime as a communication tool rather than flip-flopping it back, back and forth. Otherwise, baby is going to get a little bit confused. Subscribe below and we're going to discuss the next stage in sleep sack and swaddles tomorrow. Have people in your life been telling you, you'll never sleep again? Are you starting to stress about how life is going to change with a baby or adding an additional baby? I've been there. And mama, it's time to cheers your new best friend, Little Wink Sleep. Our Nurturing Newborns program gently and gradually lays the foundation for sleep in a way that you're able to manage and understand. We use a science-based approach that fosters healthy attachment. You'll be able to let go of the stress of newborn sleep and enjoy this stage, knowing your baby is set up with the right skills. Nurturing Newborn Sleep includes all our insider coaching strategies, taking you step by step, troubleshooting along the way, as well as